All right, we are recording. So everybody, welcome to the IPFS content routing work group number 12. I can't believe that two weeks went by since the last time we met. It's surprisingly, I think as a result of everybody being so busy, um, but uh, let me go ahead and just drop these in the notes so that anybody that's following along can pull them up. Uh, I did prepare an agenda for today uh, so that hopefully we uh, can kind of cover some important topics. We have a lot of um, for reference for people that are joining this call that are looking at these notes for the first time. Uh, some of the documents listed up here are kind of the current important documents you might want to take a look at if you're trying to get context about what these meetings are about. Um, basically, there is uh, a reference to the plan that we leverage to implement uh, SID.contact uh, as a pointer in Kubo to replace the bridging function. Well, actually, it's not accurate to say re I replace the bridging function, but to perform the bridging function from the IPFS gateways to uh, the interplanetary network indexer, um, which was previously being resolved by the hydras, which are no more. Um, and um, also SID.contact itself, which is a great place to read about the interplanetary network indexer along with the documentation there until we get our specific uh, service site up, which should be happening in a matter of the next few weeks. Looks like we've got a few uh, candidates from the team that's working on that site available to start reviewing. So we'll hopefully have something a little bit more comprehensive up soon. And then um, kind of a discussion about uh, our leadership's perspective on how we are integrating to Kubo, which happened quite a while ago, but is still relevant reading for anybody that's trying to understand contextually where we've gone in the last, uh, I would say four months um, in regards to how traffic on the network uh, routes. Okay, so all of that aside, um, I'll go ahead and jump into updates from the teams. Uh, if you are here from your team, it looks like it's mostly just IPFS stewards today and IPNI folks. So uh, we will spare uh, Bifrost from an update today, uh, but I'll run through our updates from the IPNI side of the house. And then if uh, Steve or Lito, you'd like to jump in and kind of get us up to date with, uh, with y'all's teams. So um, to keep everyone up to speed, the IPNI team has been working very hard on some, uh, I would say, kind of optimizations uh, for uh, both the read and write path. We discovered some challenges that resulted from uh, a boost issue, uh, but also simultaneously we brought the uh, reader privacy enabled encrypted value store online at the same time. And due to this confluence of, of traffic, uh, I think we recognized some challenges in the value store that um, we needed to uh, kind of get a um, value store in place that could handle these, um, these challenges a little bit better. So we've been testing some new key value store databases. Um, I'll, I'll let Masi jump in, but I think we're settling into the idea of uh, foundation DB, um, but we're still testing. Yeah, <laughs> wishy-washy. Juries are still out, but we're, we're trying different ones. The uh, underlying, goal here is to make it easy for people to run indexers so we're trying to pick a solution that is performant uh, horizontally scalable as well as operationally cheap there's a a point i'll even add a little bit to what mossy just described is that we're really uh interested in the idea of distributed databases um some of the folks that we've talked to in the community uh operate those Kind of by default and so i think we're we're looking at options that we can um, potentially leverage a value store that uh, would be performant in such a such an, a scenario so um that's ongoing definitely we'll keep this work group up to date with how that effort goes we're still testing um we are digging deep right now on caching solutions and the design discussions around them. 
Um, right now, it's very early days, I would say, in regards to the direction we go with caching solutions. Um, but we have some great ideas. Mossy specifically has been leading that effort. Uh, and uh, every time I talk to him about progress he's making, he sounds really positive. So uh, I, I maintain positivity as well. Um, but it, it seems like we feel very confident about uh, some of the solutions that we're looking at. Once we have some documentation, uh, which represents the design of these caching solutions that we hope to deploy, uh, and for context, the place that we hope to deploy them first would be Saturn to, to leverage the content delivery network to have uh, kind of an edge surface on the network where we could potentially have caches of um, the interplanetary network index. Um, this is this is kind of the 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 goal uh, so that we reduce traffic overall on the entire network plus we add a lot of redundancy sustainability by having uh, the index deployed kind of out across the network. Um, additionally, We've been doing some deep dives on our metrics uh, and even considering somewhat potentially um, consolidating them into uh, an API endpoint. It's also a little bit early in that discussion to potentially get too into the details about it. But the important thing to understand is that um, we do, because we have such a distributed service on the Interplanetary Network Indexer, uh, a lot of kind of combining sources from different nodes in order to resolve the metrics that we then articulate out to our leadership, as well as uh, anybody that follows up with our SITREP documentation on the ip and team. And so uh, our idea there is, is that we might be able to aggregate and simplify some of these metrics in a consolidated endpoint, which makes them easier for folks to understand and uh, also accessible externally, uh, kind of on demand for folks that would want to make a call out to that service. Um, plus, potentially any alarming related to um, that that you would want to build yourself, you could use the endpoint to do that kind of stuff, which would be great for external parties. Um, I think, uh, actually, I missed an item on here that uh, I'd like to add that I didn't um, have a chance to represent in the meeting two weeks ago, which is that we uh, set up our um, our service, which is checking SIDS uh, for the Internet Archive folks, uh, which was pretty exciting. Actually, we uh, deployed that service over there so that they're able to use the same measurement tool that we're using internally to check SIDS uh, in order to uh, look up their own SIDS. And they populated it with their own list uh, and they're very happy with it, it sounds like which uh, I think is a big win for the team. And uh, it's always really exciting to me to see that we spent time on a tool that the community actually finds a lot of value in, uh, especially something uh, as simple but helpful as that tool is. Um, I'll add a note here in a minute for that. Um, as well, really important high-level item. Um, we uh, are experimenting with removing the unencrypted nodes within our index from the read pathway. So the uh, reader privacy store is deployed in production uh, and it's sustainably functioning. We are wrestling with a little bit of wishy-washy traffic right now. So uh, it's not 100% a sunshine story just yet, uh, but uh, the important news to kind of take away is, is that we're so confident right now that uh, we're actually at the stage where we're looking at decommissioning some of the non-encrypted uh, uh, nodes. Uh, we'll have to check back later today or possibly even tomorrow to see how that uh, effort has gone. Uh, I'm sure that's actually probably where Ivan is right now. Uh, oh, Ivan is here. Um, but Ivan's been wrestling with that all morning. So Ivan, if there's any latest and greatest you want to drop there, please feel free. Uh, don't worry if you don't. We'll so, leave you. Uh, yeah, so uh, we uh, I just got access all the indexes from the read part. So we now all of seed.contact gets up 100% from the double hash star. But I don't want to declare victory yet. I want to leave it running, like at least, I don't know, for, for a few hours and see that there are no changes to the metrics. Uh, yeah, so. No victory declaration yet, but uh, I think it's we are getting there. So you heard it here first, everybody. Keep your trumpets 
uh, hidden from view, at least for the time being. We'll pull them out possibly in a couple hours. Maybe we'll save that excitement for tomorrow. Um, but that's that's where we're at in this process, uh, very close to being fully dependent on the encrypted value store and having reader privacy fully launched such that we would actually make a like a public announcement that the service is now fully running sustainable and it's how we're operating. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we have some CLI tooling updates that we've been working on to uh, make our commands a little bit more intuitive and also structure them in a way that's uh, uh, in hopes to improve usability. I think internally on the team, we're, we're pretty excited about what it's looking like. There is a document I can share here. I'll add to the notes afterwards, which kind of describes um, where uh, the CLI is going for uh, the IPNI, but uh, I'll share that here later. I took way more than our five minutes, but the team has been up to so much over the last two weeks. I wanted to make sure you all got to hear about it because it's all very relevant stuff. Uh, with that said, I'd love to pass the microphone over to either Lido or uh, Steve for IPFS. I can I can do the the first one. <laughs> the Sounds second, good, Lionel. The second one. <laughs> let's yep. let's divide and conquer. Um, uh, kind of like a update and heads up that the three IPIPs uh, uh, spec improvement uh, proposals against routing uh, V1 uh, HTTP API that we already have in Kubo. Uh, and on uh, cad.contact IPNI. Um, this is a maybe like all the all three are required to close the gap uh, in the con in the routing story for IPFS as a project. Um, content routing is only one of three types of routing we have. Um, uh, Aside from asking for providers of, of a CID, we also want to find the latest IPNS record for mutable uh, pointers. Um, and then we need a peer routing endpoint for uh, cases where a running full DHT client is too expensive. Uh, we had uh, um, some proof of concept so with Helia in the browser having a peer routing uh, as a first a thing that we try and then falling back to other things uh, could improve uh, uh, the performance, the speed perception uh, and user sees when they load the page or interact with uh, our stack in the web browser or other low, low powered uh, or, or constrained uh, environment. So in general, those three types of um, uh, routing um, are already th those three types of routing are al already implemented in Kubo. So what we want to do, we want to expose uh, existing routing system using this routing v1 API and take that as a uh, opportunity to one uh, write missing specs and to write uh, uh, implementation uh, in box so that's uh, uh, like a reference implementation of this API. Uh, this the goal here is to allow people to self-host their routing endpoint, not be uh, tied to some centralized uh, um, indexer or other service for if they only care about the HD proxying, they will be able to run their own Kubo and they will get all the th three types of routing today. Um, and I mentioned here because the idea is that uh, my understanding is that uh, IPNI uh, at CAD contact wants to support IPNS eventually and probably peer routing as well. You already have a bunch of information about peers, so it's mostly a question about uh, how do we surface that and how the API looks like. So those are three IPIPs. Uh, first one, streaming is important for uh, exposing DHT. Uh, we want to return results as we traverse the DHT. Um, so yeah, that kind of heads up. Um, we will we are focusing on specs. The first, uh, the first two will probably land uh, sooner than later. The the peer routing we want to uh, have more conversation around how the schema for peer looks like. Uh, but that's uh, that's the update here. Um, 
Thanks, Lyle. And real quick, are any of these, are these all just blocked on finishing up having reference implementations or are there certain inputs that we need from other people? I believe we had conversation around all like the controversial or open ended questions. Uh, so uh, we have a IPFS implementers call this Thursday and my plan mm -hmm. is to announce the first two uh, ready for the final review. We will mm -hmm. clean them up and um, uh, update me and Enrique. Uh, the third one will probably happen after that. Uh, we we have a soft agreement on how the peer schema should look like. We just need to write spec for it. Uh, so yes, there will be a spec and there will be a reference implementation in box. So, uh, Great. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure we, IP and I folks are in the loop and we don't uh, like ship uh, or uh, specify something that uh, they are not able to implement eventually. Hey, thanks, Lytle. Yeah, that, that last one it was just coming from a follow-up from I think last week's meeting, uh, right? There is a, certainly more of a pressing need to at least get some more bare minimum ability for node operators to, to you know, block content, even if we don't get the ideal solution in place. Um, you know, we just haven't been able to, there, there's already been quite a few things in flight for the Kubo maintainers this current release, so it couldn't squeeze it in right now, but we'll, you know, our, we're planning to do a Kubo release, like a release candidate this week and do the final release next week. That's, that's, the, that's the plan. Although it's, um, but so anyway, the, this uh, filtering work would be a prime candidate for the following release. We haven't scoped out the specific amount of work, but um, you know, given the importance of it, and I, I, I pretty, pretty confident we would be able to land it in the, uh, the next Kubo release, which would be 0 0.22 in July um, is how things are kind of looking. Steve, do you think we need the uh, CID blocking functionality in IPNI2? I, I mean, that's good. It's good. Good question. I hadn't been. I mean, I'm assume. Well, it's. I guess the thing that's different for you all is you're not actually serving the content, right? This is really is is very applicable for um, for gateway operators that are where people are retrieving the data. So. That, that that was the pause, and I don't know the ramifications. So I guess I don't know if others have thoughts or comments there. I don't know. I can so so far in. with the encryption, I think we've been hoping to not have to deal with this short term. So we want to, if we can move to the encrypted reads uh, for most lookups uh, of the IPNI index, then it becomes less of an issue. I think in general, be, we're we're I think even for things where we're cascading, and so we don't have encrypted reads. Uh, IPNI looks a little more like a, a Google-like thing. Eventually, we may have this as an issue, but we don't have pressure to IPNI yet, as far as I'm aware. Uh, we should make sure we've got an abuse channel set up in case we we do get it. But until we start seeing that as a problem, uh, I think being reactive here is totally fine from an IPNI perspective. I just wanted to jump in and, and kind of back that up as well, Mossy. Everything that I've heard talking to the folks over at um, over at Bifrost about this is that uh, IPNI is not like the main target audience yet, uh, and I don't I don't think it's it's necessary that we do anything but be reactive, like Will described. Um, at least currently, if that changes because we get a letter at some point somewhere that uh, shakes us in our boots. Uh, I think we'll we'll be able to take a look at that. Uh, it, it's not bad to think about uh, the perspective of implementing that, but I think we're one of the last candidates that should have to worry about it because we're kind of the final stop. So that all the layers before us that uh, are passing these lookups to us, they actually solve this problem for us, and therefore uh, stuff getting through to us uh, should be pretty unlikely. Sorry, Steve. Did you have? Um... Nope, that's all. We can carry on. Cool. Um, Guillaume, did you want to give us an update on ProBlab side? Uh, yeah, sure. So it's going to be a quick update. Um, so I'm still working on uh, re implementing the goalie P2P CAD DHT implementation. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's the branch and it's it's a big effort. So I'm probably. I'm, I'm probably still be at it in two weeks. 
And on the IPNI latency measurement side, I don't have the last update, but I know it's ongoing and Dennis working hard on this. And yeah, so Dennis Nianis, I couldn't make it this time. So yeah, I'm afraid I cannot give a much more detailed update on this. That's okay. Dennis has been very actively communicating with us. Uh, we'll, we'll do a kind of an update a little bit about where he's at right now, but Dennis has been working super hard and he's been staying in close contact with the team. And we're learning a lot by going through this process with him, I would say, because we're able to observe um, kind of the perspective of external to the network, like a, a broad lookup, which also is trying to happen from AWS uh, so there's there's more observations than just the output um, that we're looking for here. It's uh, definitely a constructive exercise to go through, I would say. Um, so that is the team updates. Let's go ahead and uh, get to the topics to cover. Uh, I just want to remind everyone, I put these topics here in the agenda every week. However, uh, they're not meant to be the authoritative list of the only things that we discuss. I would encourage all of you, if you have anything important that you would like to see covered here, to please um, feel confident in adding items to this list. <clears throat> and they may be of a higher priority potentially than some of the items that are on this list presently. Uh, so don't be shy about letting us know if there's uh, an important item that you'd like to make sure is covered by this group when we have these discussions. Uh, it's it's very welcomed input. Um, okay, so. Um, the IP9 HTTP provider specification. Uh, I just wanted to point this one out to everyone. It's a specification that we'd authored up. And internally, I think we've all kind of got a good solid read on the review, uh, but we would love feedback from the IPFS uh, stewards folks. Um, I think specifically either Lidl or Adin would be awesome candidates. If you could take a look at this, uh, we would love your feedback on it. Um, have Have you seen or heard of this yet? <laughs> yeah, I I did, and there's like some overlap with things that are happening elsewhere. Okay. Um, so namely the the fact that you are using HTTPS multi others, uh, there are multiple projects within PL uh, and IPFS ecosystem that are looking into using them. So. I, I think it's positive that we do that at the same time so we can coordinate and write it down that it does not mean IPNI, it does not mean trustless gateway, it does not mean lib P2P over HTTP, uh, it may be one or all of those things on the same uh, HTTP server mounted on the different paths. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's controversial. Uh, there will be a IP, uh, maybe like later this week, Marco wants to write it, this down. Uh, so we may want to refer that from this document just, just to make it clear. I think overall. Um, probably um, HTTP caching uh, is missing. And if you use HTTP, you probably want to benefit from that. That's the only thing from the top. Uh, of my head. I, I only read it uh, just before this meeting, so. Cool, and, and to be, yeah, th th thanks, uh, and because the, the scope here is around like being able to get the current, like the status or state of advertisements. Is that, that that's like the, the scope of this uh, IP9 HTTP provider? So I see two get methods exposed. That's how I perceive it. Masi, did you want to add any color there? That's right. So this goes uh, into a series of specs that we put out there um, as a as a way of determining whether a HTTP content provider is a HTTP content provider. So part of that functionality is discovery, and we say, as an HTTP content provider, you need to satisfy this specific specification for the discovery part. There would be other ones for retrieval as well as like deal making and so on, which comes out of boost. But this is just, you know, a portion of the overall functionality. Great, thanks. All right. I'll jump into the other topic. 
um, I want to get a little bit of clarity around this. So I hope I didn't uh, advertise too much on the ambient discovery that we talked about two weeks ago that anybody has definitively volunteered for any work. Uh, but what I would like to ask is, uh, we've broken this down to kind of two components. One is the discovery aspect of identifying um, from IPFS's perspective, uh, new uh, content routers. Explicitly in this case, they would be other IPNI nodes, but potentially we would want that capability to extend to other content routers or content routing methods. Um, so that's one aspect that we talked about. Um, the other aspect is um, actually uh, the reputational uh, decision making between which in a list of those content routers you would choose uh, under certain scenarios. And so specifically for the scope of this group, um, I think we kind of agreed, or at least during our discussions, we leaned towards agreement on specifically focusing uh, as a component of work on this reputational decision-making tree of we have a given list of content routers. We would like to choose between them and be able to send traffic their way. Um, that's the scope of the discussion as it's related here. The reason that we thought that uh, direction would make sense is because the list of IPNI nodes, at least to start, we don't expect to be so long that we couldn't maintain them as uh, kind of a roster of uh, options. Um, however, that would need to change in time, which would be the second scope of effort, which would be the iteration that discovers these and uh, then is able to perform the reputational and uh, criteria comparison that would choose where to send traffic. Does that make sense to everybody before we uh, jump into the who do we need to do what work kind of discussion? Uh, or does everybody agree with that approach that we're, we're taking? Does it make sense to focus just on the reputational aspect of this? Yom, I know you've been working on lots of routing problems with your, your brain lately. <laughs> do you have feelings about this? Yeah, sounds good. I haven't been thinking about like web of trust and this kind of stuff, but that <laughs> sounds good. It makes sense. So I think uh, for the most part, everybody agrees. This is probably a, a, a decent approach to tackling the problem. Um, the second part is, is that we know we want to focus on this reputational stuff. Uh, who should be doing that work or who should own it? And uh, I don't know that there's a specific answer yet. I think we presume potentially that um, because we expect this logic to live in uh, Kubo, and everybody tell me if I'm wrong here in this presumption. <laughs> Please don't hesitate to call me out. But um, we presume that it would live with the stewards. But is that potentially an incorrect presumption? Or is this something that would go deep backlog or potentially another team should own? Well, I, I, I think a, a implementation of this needs to be in Kubo, right? Where, where we assume CID.contact would love to get that swapped out for some ambient discovery. Um, so I, I so agree, agreed on, on that. Uh, so it, that definitely means at the minimum, uh, I feel Andres IPFS stewards are involved, or I guess the Google maintainers are involved in help making sure that that the code that lands there is, uh, you know, is going to work per usual code review standards, et cetera. Um, so I think that, that that's for sure. Then who is, you know, Who's writing that code and who's also driving the the spec and making sure that it moves forward? I think that's I think that's the open question area. Yeah, there's also uh, there's also sorry there's also like aspect of uh, writing something that's useful beyond a single use case, um, and that's why uh, the, back to the thing I mentioned at the beginning of my update. Uh, Kubo itself will be exposing routing v1 
Um, we also have a partner, uh, some uh, people in the uh, IPFS ecosystem or people external wanting to use IPFS. Uh, the usual question, how do I provide the uh, router only for my context, uh, content? So, you know, indexer, but only for my data. I'm the university. I don't have millions of dollars to host the public uh, IPNI, I, but I have data and I want to provide the indexer for uh, like my own thing. Uh, so I feel that we one thing when we have implementation in Kubo that will be able it would be easier for us to model reputations mm -hmm. um, because we already have a routing system in Kubo and we can um, tweak it <laughs> uh, to behave the, in, in certain ways. And the second thing is uh, <clears throat> making sure that whatever we reputation system we are designing, it works with a, a router which is not uh, cognizant of entire CAD space because that's not like realistic for all these cases. Um, so I feel we prob probably from the stewards side of things, uh, and until we have routing V1 in Kubo, we won't have bandwidth because uh, we are also like running on the skeleton crew. Yeah, th thanks for those points. Lila. Yeah, so I, I mean, first of all, I really like, yeah, you know, I like this work. I want to see it get done and landed. Um, just trying to be like cognizant of not signing our team up for more than we can than we can handle. Um, like I, I don't want to get into a position where like oh you know, this isn't this is important for the uh, you know, I guess some of the decentralization of indexers and that there are multiple parties at play and then oh that's not happening because like stewards aren't driving the spec. Uh, like th that's kind of the position that I want to avoid being in because like right now I don't think we can push on some more more of these kind of balls. I actually want to make sure we're not the blockers. So if other people are putting work forward and it needs reviews either at the spec level or in you know, landing PRs, like we'll like I think we'll we'll certainly prioritize making sure that happens. Uh you know, I, I think because I don't have a better accounting of what all is being asked of us right now with our current staffing that like I just general weariness to say like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drive an additional thread like this. I um I appreciate that, Steve. And I hope I'm not putting uh the stewards team too much on the spot <laughs> on this call to to talk about this subject. I really want to get to the root of like where where logically this work should be living and uh likewise um whether or not we're you know potentially taking the right approach to solving the problem together. I think ideally <clears throat> what we're building at IPNI we we perceive as um potentially being able to be leveraged by all uh all scenarios and so we're trying to build something that could um fulfill this use case of a university that doesn't have a ton of funding but wants to have routing available and so um i think when i hear that i want to like pull on that thread a little bit and ask if there's something different that we should be doing from the perspective of IPNI in order to make it the obvious choice for uh, people in that scenario to have indexed data that they can look up quickly that uh, reliably they're able to, to reference. And I think there's probably some qualities of them having routing in IPFS specifically that we perceive them as potentially getting uh, that they wouldn't necessarily get from IPNI. And I'd love to, uh, I don't know if this is the call. I'd like us to like leave this call kind of thinking about this subject, but I'd like to like really clarify, like what are those qualities and how do we get those qualities into IPNI such that uh, then IPNI becomes the answer rather than um, how do we get around the, maybe the limitations of IPNI as we perceive them. Um, Will or Masi, is what I'm saying like uh, relevant? Do you feel like uh, that's that's a target worth kind of focusing on together? Um, I guess IPNI is uh, solving this problem of how do we have a large network at scale? And there may be small private deployments of IPFS uh, that have their own small network. 
and that is not going to be the global IPNI that they use. So in that sense, there are always going to be cases where there are different sort of local setups, right? When you're running a set of Kubo nodes in your data center to do data transfer between nodes totally in your little control network or big control network, uh, it, you're also going to run an IPNI and you're going to have a totally different universe. And that is totally fine. Um, I think one, one thing that I would sort of think about here is we are likely to run into uh, this issue sooner rather than later. Uh, and in particular, uh, as RIA rolls out and we have more than one SID.contact, when, when there's not just SID.contact, but there's both, but there either is caches or there are other full instances, which are both happening in the next couple of quarters likely, um, Lassie is going to have to choose which one or ones it talks to, to do queries. And so we will come up with something as a stopgap to, to do that. And so I, I suspect that that as a result of that, what we end up with is, you know, something that as far as I know, will follow the spec that we posited, what, a year and a half ago uh, as the basic ambient discovery. And so there's been a lot of time to uh, comment and refine that spec. We haven't heard any problems with that basic. And, and so that then sort of just becomes you know what's happening and so it's going to be a challenge it's going to be more pain to roll back from that uh once that is there and that will just sort of in uh, as far as i can tell right like co code is is a thing that then is you know we can write a spec around but um you know yeah. this is in some sense like a getting ahead of it uh do we want to have something from uh a, a, you know a, a more neutral perspective um, as a initial implementation, uh, as a way to not feel like we've accidentally done something too specific. Yeah, yeah, I think like the only open question, I, I think it's uh, even on, on that PR, if not, we, we should add that to the compatibility section. Um, is the underlying assumption uh, of the reputation system? you build a reputation system in a totally different way if you assume every actor has, should have access to the same set of CIDs. Um, so that's like the reason why I mentioned that because that like that's the fair the very first thing that we need to agree and that will inform their entire reputation system. Uh, the one on the IP right now it assumes the the global knowledge uh, um, which I'm I'm going to push strongly on that. I think if you have something else that's like your university or whatever, you probably are going to put that in manually at, in addition. And you're not going to go through the same reputation system for your LAN partial one. The the reason I'm going to push for that is the you know the thing that we would really like for efficiency and speed is that you don't have an infinite number of things and you have to check all of them in order to do a lookup. Because then we just can't win on competitiveness with an HTTP or centralized thing. Uh, so, so we need the ability to get to completion, get to get to sort of feeling like we've done a full search without in, in a scaling of N uh, lookups needing to happen from every client. Uh, and the only way that I think we can get there is by having this assumption that uh, there is a global view. Uh, and so this is pushing people to export their private SIDs um, as a way to allow us to have stuff more fast than, oh, I've got my database as well, and it's only on my very slow server, and so everyone has to come and ask every query to me, which is just not a sustainable thing that we can have and, at a larger network. Okay, uh, so I mean, like, the the use case I described, it can be solved uh, manually. Um, it could be a separate sp uh, protocol as well uh, for a partial uh, indexers. I don't think that's like a controversial take. Um, yeah. Okay, so just to you know, for moving this for, I mean, this obviously has been, I mean, obviously it was open as a HackMD and then as a IP and IP, oh, sorry, an IP IP uh, PR for many months or, or long, yeah, longer than that. Um, so I think part of it didn't get more look because you know, was there actually any implement was there actually going to be any push on the implementation side to get it you know, done and landed and I think what I'm hearing you say well is like yeah this is going to be coming like like for example Lassie's going to need to do this at the minimum uh, 
And you know, that if it starts getting ossified, like yeah, and here's the best chance to influence. We do have some implementation lining up, so like now is kind of the time to engage. Um, so may, make sense. So holding to what I said earlier of like at the minimum, uh, IPFS stewards want to make sure that they're providing input, even if they're not driving something. It's like okay, now would be a good time to be making sure we're looking at it before others start trying to implement that spec. So I think we should take that as an action. Is I mean since this. IPIP was written. I know we have like learned some things about how to do better IPIPs, and there's like you know a little bit more template in place around motivation and security concerns, etc. I don't know if this particular one is um, following that latest template or not. That might be something uh, worth. I think that's something we were going to want done regardless of or so it, before it would get merged anyway. So if if it needs a like a a retrofit to the latest template, that's probably worth. Um, doing well if, if you're kind of driving it on on your side and then i guess on the ipfs stewards and lytle is this something that you think in the next uh couple of weeks you'd have bandwidth to give some and uh, kind yeah. of see where we're at and give input on yeah 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 i think that it, it, it's important if we make very clear in in uh, in the purpose of this discovery uh that uh that, that that's like beneficial to the ecosystem because uh people will know that they cannot use this for partial indexers. And I think that's a positive because we have more focus on well fans. Uh, the, the, uh, implementation wise, uh, we'll mention uh, we'll probably land in Lassie, then for it to land in something like Kubo, we would have to uh, have an implementation box. So maybe just start in box and we have a single one. Um, that's just, you know, the duplicate work, but this is, uh, I mean, like the, the reference implementation for the client, I guess, um, mm -hmm. that would be like lip P2P protocol implementation or something, or it could be separate repo, uh, um, if that uh, makes more sense, uh, it, 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 it's de facto, uh, It, it's it, it's lip P2P protocol specific to IPFS. We have those, like we have bit swap in the box. So maybe it makes sense to have this in box as well, uh, but uh, could be also separate repo, whatever works better. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate everyone taking that that discussion on it's uh it's important and part of the reason that i'm pressing on it is just because uh i do know that we're going to approach this state where we do need to uh, start sharding traffic out to other uh, instances sooner than later we're not there yet but that's why i'm raising the flag now to like give us a little bit of breathing room before uh we rapidly approach that because I suspect this is uh, one of those like hockey sticks of pressure type of uh, dependencies where uh, now you've got, you know, everybody ready to go do something, but they can't do it until, you know, whatever blocker is done. And uh, I hate putting everybody in, in that position where there's a fire to put out and uh, suddenly we're trying to reorganize anything we're doing to support something that's uh, never a fair position for people to be put in. Uh, so I'm hoping to get the word out as early uh, as we can, uh, you know, on something that's uh, been a little bit back burner, but is starting to become more and more uh, urgent over time. Um, so thank the, you. The, yeah, sorry. The, the positive on the positive note is that the way we have uh, um, IPNI set up today in Kubo and places like Brave makes it f fairly transparent. Migrate. There's like no configuration change. The existing users will seamlessly switch to this uh, auto discovery once we ship it. So, uh, on the end user uh, side of the story, I think we are pretty lucky. Awesome. Um, thanks, Lido. We'll we'll look for uh, some review and kind of feedback from you, and then uh, I think we'll kind of talk as a team about uh, how we're approaching this as well. And see what we can come up with. Steve, appreciate all your feedback on that. Um, so uh, I did just wanna check in and give a, a glaring accommodation for the work that the folks at Probe Lab are doing. Um, they've been super involved in uh, kind of working through the process of uh, sorting out this test. 
uh, and uh, it's been really beneficial working with them. Dennis is really hustling and going through uh, a lot of uh, setup challenges, but uh, the lessons I think we're learning about setting up these tests to operate against IPNI will continue to pay dividends uh, in the future. Um, because I suspect that once we've got it set up, uh, we should be able to, you know, execute again in the future. But also, I think we're going to get some pretty unique uh, visibility in how the network is working uh, from this test. And I'm really excited about the results. I think the report that comes from this is going to be uh, really beneficial and exciting. So um, I, I didn't intend to get any of the details specifically of aspects of the testing that's going on. I'd like to raise a flag and ask if anybody does want to call out any specific components of it that they think is relevant to uh, the viewers, you know, potentially outside of this call that would be interested in it. Um, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Dennis for all his hard work and commitment. And I know Guy's uh, probably taking care of other stuff in the background so that Dennis can focus on this. And uh, we really appreciate that support, y'all. Um, we did see as a result of some of, um, well, not just a result of this, but I think our introspection that we're doing currently, we're seeing uh, kind of a consistent decline in traffic. And uh, we don't have folks from Bifrost here, but I may be taking another discussion away uh, with them in regards to this, um, regarding whether or not we understand what the, what the cause for that decline in traffic is. Um, and whether or not it's being experienced uh, all over the network or it's just at IPNI that we're seeing it. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that? I, I can say that um, the Bifrost team is looking at getting traffic measurement from the gateways to IPNI in place, but they don't have it completely in place yet. And I actually haven't gotten the question satisfied that, do we know that this will tell us comprehensively that all of the traffic is being passed or will it be the type of measurement or alarming that we only know that some of the traffic is going over, but it's not comprehensive of our traffic solution. And that if we receive a subset of traffic, that it's a matter of circumstance that we happen to uh, recognize the component of the traffic that uh, is being passed and that the component of the traffic that isn't being passed potentially we miss uh, with whatever this method for alarming that we're building is. Uh, I know that there was like a, an RPC call blocker that Lidl, you called out that I think we determined is no longer a blocker uh, for the measurement uh, tool that they're attempting to deploy. But do you have any insights Little into uh, that question specifically, or oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the like the it, it's actually pretty easy. So the, there's like the metric is in Kubo twenty. Uh, they need to upgrade uh, gateway boxes to Kubo twenty, uh, and the metric shows you how many requests were sent to the IPNI endpoint. So uh, the question is, do you have an insight into cache? Uh, hits only or uh, uh, cash misses only or both cash hits and misses. I assume you see both. So then you will be able to compare both numbers and both. see if it's like from the gateway. Yeah. Okay. So we should be able to do an easy compare and contrast to recognize whether or not there's a variance in traffic from these two uh, sources. There's another parameter here, which is uh, adoption rate of Kubo versions that correctly send traffic to sit at contact. Uh, so we need to normalize numbers based on whatever version people are running, which is a slightly more complicated. Yeah, I, I think we send it in user agent header. I mean, the Kubo version, right? So you should be able to. Right, but I guess the question I'm asking is what subset of network is upgraded to a version that is sending us traffic? Um, so if 10% if of the network is upgraded, then maybe you know the numbers make sense. But if it's 95% if it, of the network is upgraded, but we still don't see any traffic, then there's something fishy, right? Yeah. 
Well, I think maybe I've been thinking about this wrong, um, but correct me. I, I've been thinking about this with respect specifically to the IPFS gateways themselves and measuring that the gateways are sending 100% of traffic. But then there's like a secondary component, which is like the broader network. Um, I've been yeah. talking to Bifrost about specifically the IPFS gateways recognizing this, but should I course correct or should we be considering like a second measure, which is? I think there are multiple aspects here. One is uh, Hydra, is, uh, Hydra shut down. And the reason it's shut down is because I, Kubo knows now talk directly to a sit uh, contact. So one part of this problem is of the uh, proportion of Kubo nodes that are running out there, how many have the capability to send uh, information to sit contact and how many actually do? The second one is the uh, gateway stuff. Right? So in gateway, again, you have a subcategory of problems, which is gateway itself runs multiple nodes and each of those run multiple or different versions of Kubo. The first question is, are, are they all running a version of Kubo that can also set in uh, traffic to sit that contact? And the second question is, um, how much traffic is being sent? So then the third thing is, from the server's perspective, how much who am I receiving traffic from? Right? This is the sit that contact, the, the script thing that I wrote. So from server perspective, I can confirm that I can see IP addresses of gateways. Uh, but obviously, we don't know what we don't know. So if there's an IP address that we don't know about, that should be sending traffic, we won't see it. That's why it needs both sides' uh, collaboration to roll, rule things out on the gateway side. But on the Kubo side, I think we need uh, input from Probe Lab to tell us adoption rate and upgrades of Kubo nodes. Yeah, I, I send a link uh, to that. Uh, Half of the network is uh, Kubo 18, so it takes a while to slowly upgrade. Yep. And uh, Lidel, would you mind reminding me which version fixed the bug? Uh, because you know, see that contact was included in 018, but I think it hit a bug where it wasn't sending traffic to see that contact, right? So zero no, so matter. zero eighteen was was a reframe still, I think, and then it's been up until twenty. So nine, nineteen and twenty maybe uh, both have um, uh, an incompatibility, but only with the accelerated DHT client. So normal users uh, will still be sending it. We believe it's just the configuration that we were running on the gateways with the accelerated client that was causing it not to get sent. Okay, so we are looking at 3.7 plus 6.3, uh, which is, what is it, 10% of total network in Kubo. And just to confirm, like uh, expanding on what Will said, we did manually validate that this fix that we did for the accelerated client issues was was functionally working. Like we were able to see traffic passing there. What I'm talking about specifically is that we set up alarming and monitoring such that we would recognize via alerts that this traffic wasn't being passed, um, regardless of like manual verification. Just so everybody knows. Um, that happens to watch this. Um, anything else on that topic anybody wants to cover? It's kind of, uh, it's a bit of a loose end. I, I think we don't know what the decline in traffic is resulting from or whether or not it's relative to the deployment on the gateways that we have. Are we just seeing a decline in the volume of traffic? Um, Guy, I think that would be something to think about. It would, I'd love to have you go away from this meeting, kind of thinking about um, what we're seeing in regards to traffic and whether or not there are like observable aspects of the network that we could leverage to kind of get to the root of this, this mystery. Because I think from the IP&I team side of the house, 
I think there's not uh, an obvious um, solution here. We're really questioning whether or not it's us simply seeing the um, a lower volume of, of traffic lookups, or um, is it you know is it the entire network? We don't know, um, and I'm not sure there's there's other ways we could be validating it really. I think we've we've kind of looked at all the angles that we might. I'm not sure we're tracking requests, like the number of requests for, for instance, the DHTR, the rest of the content router to compare. But that would be a good metric. I don't know how easy it would be to set up. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I can try thinking on this. Um, yeah, see if there's a logical explanation. I don't have one yet, but yeah. I we'll think figure out. we've chatted a little bit with uh, Dennis about this as well, specifically with like kind of the work that he's doing. And obviously he's he's measuring something very specific that's somewhat different to this. But um, with how involved he is, it, it would be interesting to um, kind of have him thinking about this problem while he's going through all the trouble of uh, doing this uh, network kind of virtualization and um, doing these lookups. Um, the uh, we have two minutes left, uh, so I just want to um, the the kind of the last item in mind. Does anybody have anything pressing that they want to get to um, with the group while we've got everyone here? All right. Well, Adine's not here today, but he had dropped in. <laughs> he had dropped a note for us. Uh, regarding some uh, issues with lookups. It looks like Mossy actually already jumped on it uh, and is tearing it up, but I don't think we need to, to beat this topic up uh, unless anyone wants to. I put it here just in case he was here and we wanted to use the, the wisdom of the crowd to take a look at it. Um, with that said. It's, it's confirmed, it's a bug, uh, oh, okay. it just needs fix. Great, we like finding a bug and fixing. Um, that said, it looks like we'll finish on time and not drag you all into other meetings. I hope everyone has a great week. Thanks for joining. As always, it's a huge pleasure seeing you all. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.